we may also be able to be in our relationships with others. But the meaning making in which we engage is not simply a process of consciously deciding to be a certain kind of person, mm. or plumbing the depths to discover our true character or soul. Healthy multiplicity is a lifelong negotiation, not a model of finality, certainty, or perfection. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was inspired at this very place to go back and confront the racism and anti-Semitism of Nazi Germany, in his well-known poem, Who Am I?, resolved an anguishing sense of contradictions and multiple sensitivities by resting in the faith statement that, whoever I am, thou knowest, O God, I am thine. Just as our God imagos reflect our infantile state of utter dependency and cannot be separated entirely from our earliest experiences of our seemingly omniscient and omnipotent parents, the function of maternal holding that we internalize for our sense of security in the world is also reflected in this description, Bonhoeffer's description of divine holding. We are held by God as surely or even more surely than by our earthly parents. In the words of St. Julian of Norwich, when we fall, quickly God raises us up with God's loving embrace and God's gracious touch. And when we are strengthened by God's sweet working, then we willingly choose God by grace that we shall be God's servants and God's lovers constantly and forever. And finally, the fourth strand, embodied ethical practices. We experience a sense of identity as it grows and is formed over time by our actual <coughs> behaviors and actions in the world. Our bodies not only experience passively, but act. Our agency and our sense of agency are intertwined with our actual history, involving our bodies, our relationships, and our spirituality, our sense of values, meaning, and purpose, and the ways in which we have acted in the world. Our actions also are not identical with our memories of actions or events. Memory itself is multiple, mutable, always subject to interpretation and reinterpretation. Memory is neither fixed nor factual. It also can't be reduced only to narrative, although what is narrated about and to us deeply influences and shapes our sense of identity and our actions. Our concrete practices amid other living beings, while subject to selective and fluid interpretation by others, leave a mark in our <coughs> communities and on the earth. We have impact, for good or for ill. And the tracings we leave behind are maps by which others may come to know something about us quite apart from our own subjective sense of identity or purpose. As these maps are read back to us by others, we may confirm old directions or discern new pathways. The histories we have written on the world to be read intersubjectively by ourselves and others give us a further sense of going on being, but always with the possibility of change and new creation. So to conclude, an orientation toward multiplicity moves us toward an embrace of mystery and of all that remains beyond knowledge, beyond certainty, beyond singular truth. By embracing multiplicity and honoring mystery, we may perhaps discover a more expansive, appreciative, and generous way of living and relating with others, and even with the divine, the source of all loves, all mercies, all creativities, all truths, all voices, and all justice.